If you're like me and you have been going from one shitty online game to the next and just need a break, you have come to the right place. Hey Gameheads, it's your host b Doc, and let's talk about 10 really interesting offline games to help you escape the internet. One of the reasons I love making offline recommendation videos is that I get to discover hidden gems and surprising titles and today's starting game is just that, Quest Hunters, a fantasy RPG with isometric top view and colorful graphics. Pretty much a Diablo-like, added with random generated dungeons, a dialogue influencing storyline, good looking combat with a classless skill system, puzzle mechanics, a couch co-op mode, yeah, you don't see those often anymore. The part that for some reason I'm discovering this right now is straight up embarrassing. It even has a free demo to try it out. All I'm saying is that I'm genuinely impressed by it. As soon as I'm done with the video, I'm definitely going to check it out. It's available on all mobile platforms with a free demo. Next up is Egg, the platform puker. Ah, the lens I go in order to entertain you guys is honestly astonishing. Let's just get this over with. And please don't ask me how I found this disgusting masterpiece. Clearly a gag toilet humor filled platformer. Egg follows a boy that's severely allergic to eggs and for some reason eats a giant living one. After which he gains the ability to use his gut content as a vomit propellant. And that's the game folks. You vomit your way through a surprisingly colorful and beautiful world with very angry robot chickens. Cause that makes a whole lot of sense. So jump, vomit propel and battle mobs across 36 or so unique levels. Just play the game, it looks hilarious and it's available on all mobile platforms and it's gonna cost you a few bucks. Did you ever play this section of Evil and 2 and thought to yourself, huh? What if there was a game exactly like this, made with the same mechanics? Well, someone definitely did and made Bright reappear. Oh my god, I love Evoland. The story, the multiple mini games is the best. Okay, back to the script. Bright Reappear is a good blend, containing a unique take on match trace style gameplay with strategy attached to it in a fantasy RPG roguelike setting. Good god, another roguelike. Could you quit it? Anyway, set in the continent of Also, featuring the reappearance of a dark queen and her evil army. Classic queen stuff. I said quit it. It's up to the citizens and warriors of this continent which include humans and other creatures to stand up and fight for its safety, defeating the great evil in the process. So you basically march tiles to rack up attack points which you can use to defeat the enemy and move on to the next level. So it's like Slay the Spire but match duels. Exactly, featuring 4 unique heroes to select from, 12 different themed levels and lots of enemies to fight through. The game is available on all mobile platforms and it's paid. End to Die is next, the third installment to the beloved End to Die series. It kind of deviates from the mechanics of the previous games, favoring a more platform roguelike mechanic rather than the car survival shooter that the series has been built upon. Yeah, roguelikes are cool and all, but it's getting a bit too much if you ask me. I know right? Anyway, your goal is to repair your smashed vehicles by getting parts in elaborate zombie field dungeons where you collect enough XP to level up and get randomly generated arrays of skill cards that enhance your survival chances as you climb higher and fight bosses. It's a fun time with a lot of similarities to Survivor IO but in a more platformer package. It doesn't sit well however with a lot of their fan base. They just simply want to ram through stuff, they don't want another survival IO ripoff. And who can blame them? Well, I still think it's a nice and fun twist. But hey, I haven't played any of the two sequels before this, so I might just be spitballing here. For those that are interested, however, it's free and in all app stores. 
Next up is Storyteller, and as the name easily suggests, you create storylines with the help of an enchanted book. Assemble each interactive comic character from a library of animated ones that react in real time to your choices. Walk your way through each genre to earn the coveted Storyteller's crown. So in short, you are given the role of an author of a fantasy world guiding the actions of dozens of characters to create scenarios that suit your interests. So you are literally God. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Storyteller is a Netflix exclusive title that is available on own by platform and that means that you will need a subscription to play. You know how most VR games give you so much control that it often leads to a lot of war crimes like the one in your screen? Well, the next game Core Box kind of does exactly the same thing. So you can cut off heads? Yes, yes you can. Core Box is an open world polygon style free room that gives you limitless freedom and control. It's heavily physics based so there is going to be some hilarious moments. You can also do some incredibly extreme borderline war crime stuff like blowing up people, running them over with your car and just straight up decapitating them. Fuck yeah! Anyway, moving on, Godbox is free and available on all by platforms. Okay, let's continue with another roguelike by the name Space Gladiator. Even though it is a roguelike, it kind of gives me Hollow Knight vibes, like that gladiator part of the game, someone just took it and ran with it. The story follows your hero that awakens in a space pit after a scarce tutorial, you have to make your way through the labyrinth and try to survive for as long as possible. You know, roguelike mechanics. It has an interesting premise with platform action, dozens of eccentric bug mobs and characters, challenging boss fights, a plethora of weapons and item types with hilarious descriptions, gory and chaotic combat and all the stuff that normally come with the genre. Even though it's well received on PC, it was chunky with unresponsive touch controls that exposed a non-refined port. But that's just me. If you still can't get past that, it's a solid roguelite that's available on all mobile platforms and it's paid. It's been a while since I've talked about a good deck builder on mobile, which is the next game on today's list. It's an amazing deck builder with a collection of interesting cards to build your deck with. The game mixes strategy and town building with roguelike and survival elements sprinkled into the mix. I'm not a fan of the genre, so listing its strengths is slightly above me, but the reviews on Steam suggest a splendid experience. Yeah, Wild Frost offers a lot of variety in cards, multiple interesting mechanics including a counter system and interesting story where the song literally freezes up and lots more. It's the biggest thing since Slay the Spire, some might say, and it's available on all mobile platforms. And oh, it also has a free demo to try out if you are unsure. Okay, let's continue with my latest gaming obsession, Witchwood. Now this. This is a good game, with great similarities to Dunstaff, another great yet difficult title. The story follows a witch awakened from a deep slumber by a talking goat and on the quest to wake up a mysterious girl that she found somewhere in her basement. A pretty interesting premise complemented with beautiful watercolor style graphics, an interesting open world filled with quests, lots of craftables, hexes and spells that make you feel like a true gutter fabled witch and lots more. The game is a very fun one, with clever mechanics here and there that is a touch of genius. It's a bit underrated and that makes me sad. You can catch the game on all my platforms for a small token. When I heard about this game, I felt elated but at the same time green with jealousy that I wasn't even able to play it on my Android. Death Stranding yeah, why do iOS always get the good stuff? A port to the intense working simulator of 2019 with one of the most convoluted and confusing plotlines ever told in fiction. You just have to play it to understand it. 
The game is set in the United States following a cataclysmic event which caused destructive creatures to begin roaming the earth. You control Sam Potter Bridges, a courier tasked with delivering supplies to isolated colonies as well as reconnecting them via a wireless communication network all while carrying a fetus that acts as an alert system. Like I said, you have to play the game. My jealousy rages that I can't enjoy this game. <coughs> Get an iPhone. <coughs> Anyway, it's an Apple Arcade exclusive title retelling the story of the original game in the palm of your hands. Although a bit expensive, iPhone users can experience this wondrous title on their App Store. Lucky bastards. Okay, with that we are done. Which offline game are you gonna try next? Let me know in the comment section and I will see you in the next one. You can go ahead now and subscribe, like, do whatever you can to make the video get better. Ciao, I'm out too. bye.